Militants have killed at least 19 people in raids on two villages in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This comes after President Felix Tshisekedi declared a state of siege over the escalating violence in the eastern provinces of Ituri and North Kivu. A surge in attacks by armed groups and intercommunal fighting in the DRC's east have killed more than 300 people since the start of the year and fueled a humanitarian crisis with more than 1.6 million people displaced in Ituri province. A Ugandan rebel group called the Allied Democratic Forces is believed to be responsible for much of the recent bloodshed. The group formed 20 years ago has carried out a spate of reprisal attacks on civilians, killing about 850 people last year. Meanwhile, the United Nations has warned some 2.8 million people are in need of emergency assistance. For more on this story, we're now joined via Zoom by Nixon Katembo, an analyst and Channel Africa producer. Nixon, a very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Globe. Good evening, Simpi, and good evening to your viewers. So what, uh, what steps would be taken next under the state of siege? Will the government send more troops to the affected regions? I think uh, this is an unprecedented step that the president is taking in the face of what is happening in that particular uh, region of the Democratic Republic of Congo. But there is nothing new to it because the region is already, in my own view, saturated with uh, so many uh, boots on the ground. You have the MONUSCO uh, troops, which are in part of, uh, of the east in the country. And then you have the large uh, number of uh, um, uh, military uh, officials. I mean, uh, uh, the entire uh, army uh, has much of its concentration in the east of the country. So um, it doesn't necessitate troops. And uh, I think uh, the president is, is just declaring this uh, state of siege as a dressage to the larger problem that is happening in the country. Uh, especially in the provinces of North Kivu and uh, Ituri province, uh, which, in my own view, and uh, having followed the event on in that particular region, will not solve an, anything, but rather will ask, escalate uh, uh, the situation in that country. Because in that country, because um, now there will be a leeway for army. Uh, officers uh, operating with impunity uh, without uh, much uh, necessarily um, following uh, laws of, uh, of war and uh, even uh, basic principles of human rights being respected. Well, not much is known about the state of emergency or the state of siege declared in the East, replacing the civil administration with the military administration. So how is this military action different from the previous military actions? There is no difference in, in a sense. It's, it's a just, as I said, it's a just a, a dressage of a, a larger problem that is happening in the country. Uh, what is needed to be done, though, is to look at what the UN have investigated, especially uh, in the UN mapping report, pointing out to military officers who have been implicated in the killing of civilians, including uh, foreign forces, uh, namely those coming from Rwanda and some, some military officers within the Ugandan army uh, operating in that area, some uh, to the extent of funding militias that are operating in the area and then uh, being used as a caveat and uh, to uh, cause mayhem and continue the plunder of resources in that particular region, especially the North Kivu and the Ituri province. So replacing uh, the, the civilian rules with, with the military officials further escalate uh, these uh, um, uh, problems that exist already because the military can, cannot be exonerated from what is happening in uh, that particular region, especially uh, places like Beni, where, uh, in fact, uh, those uh, lower-ranking military officers do not even receive their salary uh, that uh, they, they come from the government, where uh, uh, military um, uh, generals who are in there uh, has, see this as an opportunity to enrich themselves. So if you put them... Uh, at the head of the of the statisticians such as the governors of 
provinces, uh, in this case, the province of North Kivu, and, uh, and the Turi province, you are giving a military much power to run even a mock. So I don't think that the situation is to help, but rather to just um, uh, show the government is doing something where it has completely failed with its own troops. In fact, uh, according to uh, UN reports, especially from the UN group of experts, it has shown that there are some military army officers who are part of the problem, who are um, uh, involved in, 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 in the problem that is happening there, especially the killing of civilians apart from the ADF. So uh, you would understand also the, the, the support from uh, foreign forces. You have the, the Rwandan uh, uh, special forces who have been in, in that particular region since uh, uh, April last year, close to 9,000, but this is not spoken of. They are running a covert operation in the east of the country. So how then uh, this will help pacify the region if you have a, a myriad of different actors uh, coming to, to the region just to cause destabilization uh, owing to and then killing civilians rather than looking at reforming the statisticians and including cleaning up the army. Uh, for far too long, the DRC is composed of uh, an army that is uh, uh, issued from different rebel groups. And these rebel groups, we know their support where they come from. My, much of them come from Rwanda and much of them come from Uganda. And uh, having uh, entered the DRC army with the mix, uh, different uh, uh, dressage, as they called it, uh, these still have allegiance to those uh, uh, forces that uh, supported them during their rebellion. And then, then you see uh, the conflict perpetuating in the East uh, rather than finding solution to it. Well, the, A the ADF, which you mentioned, uh, originated in the 1990s in Western Uganda with the aim of establishing an Islamic state in the country. And it's one of the more than 100 rebel groups that plague the eastern provinces of the country. And about a year ago, you'll remember that the Congolese army even launched a large-scale campaign against the ADF. Let's now talk about the extent of the influence that the ADF has in the east. I understand that it is linked to the Islamic state group ISIL. But uh, United Nations experts dispute this. Yes, of course, the United Nations experts dispute that because they, they know the real problem is the invasion of the DRC. They know the real problem is that those uh, army officers from various rebel groups such as the M23, the CNDP, and uh, uh, the RCD who are causing mayhem uh, to the exp to the of this of the Congolese people, they know too well who are uh, the people behind this. But uh, instead, the ADF is being used as a caveat to cover the real problem of what is happening in that particular region. You would understand that the ADF originated from the Uganda, as you mentioned, and uh, its first attack was done on a primary school in Kichwamba and Kasese district. And the second attack was done on the 26th of October 1996 in the Buera area, uh, in, in, still in the, in the Ruenzori uh, mountain in the Kasese district. So there haven't been a significant uh, advances from the ADF. In fact, as I talk to you now, uh, the, the overall command of the ADF, who was the leader, Jamil Mukulu, is in prison in Uganda. So the ADF have been significantly weakened owing to uh, repeated um, Ugandan intervention in that particular region, especially in uh, uh, mountain, uh, mountain Ruenzori, on the slopes of mountain Ruenzori, uh, at one time led by the, the late uh, General uh, James Kazini and uh, uh, the retired Colonel, Lef Lieutenant Colonel Mohindo Mawa, who, who is both from the uh, Ugandan army. So uh, I don't see the ADF being the real problem here. The real problem is within the Congolese army, especially from former uh, rebel integrated in the Congolese army, uh, who are using uh, ADF as a caveat in the, uh, perpetuating mayhem. And uh, this is supported by uh, various UN reports. These are not my own uh, making, but uh, if you read 
carefully uh, the, the UN mapping report, including the various reports that have come out from the UN group of experts. It details some of the accounts of what is happening. And so I don't know why the ADF should still uh, being, be used as a, as, a, as a caveat or rather as a, the sole uh, problem that is, uh, is happening there. You would understand that the group such as the NDC, uh, NDC which then uh, split it to become NDC Renove, most of those officers are us, were supported by uh, by the Congolese government, especially um, uh, uh, the likes of uh, um, uh, uh, Desirenga Bokisuba and uh, the likes of uh, uh, Muisa. Uh, um, so th those are issues that really should be talked about. What one would understand that perhaps the Congolese government should see to it, especially the new president, uh, hit the call of reforming the army because that's where lie the problem. And apart from heeding the call to reforming the army, why isn't the Tshisekedi administration dealing with this matter of foreign influence? You say that the ADF has been, has been used as a caveat. I mean, why isn't it dealing it on a diplomatic level and engaging all the regional bodies such as the African Union in, the, in this particular instance? You would understand that those who are supposed to be engaged are, are very people who are part of the problem. Mm. It's like inviting, um, a, 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 inviting an antelope, a, I mean, inviting lions to, 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 to discuss the case of an antelope here. <laughs> and the, the, it's very interesting how uh, people always run to discuss about the issues of Rwanda being involved in finding the problem. I mean, let's face it, you have the refinery of tins, the refinery of coltan being installed in, in Kigali. Uh, on the other side, in Kampala, you have a refinery of gold, of both of which are coming on the other side from the DRC. So uh, the conflict there is more... Uh, beneficial to those immediate neighbors of the DRC and inviting them to be part of the solution of finding peace in the DRC. I, I think it just goes back to what I've just said of inviting Lion to discuss the, the, the problem of, of the antelope. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Nixon. We do appreciate the time. Thank you. That was Nixon Katembo, an analyst and SABC Channel Africa producer speaking to us live via Zoom.